Hey everybody, thanks for being here. Really sweet to see faces and totally, if you don't want to keep your camera on, you do what you need to do. <laughs> um, and for those of you practicing with us later on the YouTube channel, I know there's lots of regular folks that tune in. We're extending our attention and appreciation for your presence and your practice as well. Thanks for joining us. <clears throat> uh, my name is Jill and my pronouns are they and them and I'm uh, living on Six Nation territory, colonially known as Fergus, Ontario. And um, I'm one of the Dharma teachers with True North Insight and really happy to share practice with you. And I uh, also, I'll put a link down below to our upcoming New Year's retreat, which is a very special retreat. I'm biased, maybe, but uh, lots of regular folks come to it, and and uh, it's been happening for many years now. Uh, first, my teachers, Molly Swan and Norman Feldman, offered this retreat for many years in Guelph at the beautiful retreat center. Loyola House, great, great food, vegan food mostly, and <clears throat> private rooms, and it's very special property. Uh, yeah, and, and these last few years I've been offering this retreat. So it runs uh, December 29th to January 2nd. Um, yeah, if you have any questions about it, you can shoot me a message or uh, check out the link down below. <clears throat> Be sweet to have you there. It's pretty special. And yeah, okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to share a little bit, another little piece of recent journey into Bhutan that I had with a group of fellow meditators and with my teachers. <clears throat> and, oh, Bhutan, <laughs> it's so hard to find words to describe such a place. Um, so last week, you can find the recording on the channel, we talked about the wisdom from the children and some of the dharma of the schools that we visited there. <clears throat> and tonight, uh, I want to share uh, what I'm calling Bhutanese road wisdom. <laughs> so, Timpu is the capital of Bhutan, and it's the largest city in Bhutan. <laughs> The population in Timpu in 2024 was projected to be 114,551, so we can round 115,000. Um, <clears> and that is similar to the population of, um, I don't know if you're familiar with um, Southern Ontario, it's, it's very similar to the population of Kingston, Ontario or Waterloo. Um, <clears throat> so it's a, a good size city for sure. And in this city, <clears throat> well, in the whole country of Bhutan, there are no traffic lights. They don't have any traffic lights. They tried it once for a day. They put up one traffic light and it caused more havoc than not having them. Like everyone was so confused and it was causing accidents and chaos and they <laughs> took it down. <clears throat> so yeah, apparently that lasted a day. And in this city, Timpu, they <clears throat> apparently, I don't, I couldn't, I think they only have like one like traffic cop um, kind of in, in a major intersection. You know, it has like this, of course, beautiful painted, carved, ornate 
uh, cement circle in the center of a, an intersection with this officer dressed in this, you know, beautiful, um, beautiful outfit with these white gloves. And, and there's some videos of, of these traffic officers. <clears throat> it's like a dance. They're doing these beautiful gestures and it's almost, it's very beautiful, like so many things in Bhutan. <clears throat> I only saw one of these intersections with, so I don't, I think it, they only have one at a major intersection, but maybe there's a few in that city. I think there's only one, but <clears throat> We never saw any car accidents or any, no one honking at each other or anything like that. There, there was, <clears throat> there's a lot of speed bumps, which is super cool because everyone has to go slow or you could wreck your car, but it's so, there's no, um, the speed bumps do a lot of the, traffic moderation to slow down you got to slow down and <clears throat> I noticed this here where was I driving the other day and there was like a lot of speed bumps quite regularly where was that might have been in Dundas was it in Dundas Maureen is there a lot of speed bumps there I'm trying to remember I think it was this one area there and it's like they're they're spaced enough that like you you're not going to speed up in between. You just you just keep going at a steady pace and slow down and easy over, etc. <clears throat> and you can um, possibly imagine that Bhutan in the Himalayan mountains is when you get out of this city that's kind of in a valley, the roads are pretty nuts, like just winding um, switchback roads up the Himalayan mountains and very winding, very steep, like you just go up and up and up for hours and you get to the top and then you go down and down and down to get to some other side or something. Uh, <clears throat> and even on those roads, like it's constant switchback. So there's all these corners, corners everywhere. And if it looks like someone wants to pass behind you, you put your signal on to let them know it's clear ahead, you can pass. And they give a little, like one honk, it's, you know, not like a annoying honk, but just like one honk of their horn to let oncoming traffic no coming around passing so th there's like this awareness of each other and communication that's happening between drivers from what I could see in my limited time <clears throat> apparently there are a fair number of accidents on the roads because of of drinking and driving and also a, a, a fair number of accidents and injuries and deaths because of the monsoons and landslides because it's all mountainous and so there's all kinds of, they're, they're always working on trying to keep the hillside on the hill, but it, that's a very big ongoing problem when they have their monsoon seasons. Um, but along with the speed bumps, especially once you get onto these highway roads, <laughs> they've got these really big cement signs. They're kind of, it's not like a sign that's up high, but it's, they're low, like kind of on the ground, big solid signs made of cement, and then they're painted all these messages. And some of them are <laughs> really amusing. <clears throat> Pardon me with this cough irritation thing but um 
I started to take note of them because they really stood out. They're like pretty regularly all the way along the roads. And so I just started jotting them down on my phone as we were there for this period of time. So I'm going to let you know some of these <clears throat> signs because I think there's a lot of wisdom in them and they will inspire our meditation as well tonight. Okay, so here's one. Going faster will see disaster. There, there's somebody there really likes rhyming. There's a lot of rhyming. <clears throat> On the bend, go slow, friend. They just have a sweetness to them. I don't know. Life is a journey. Complete it. <clears throat> uh, time is money, but life is precious. You see, it's not like the people there aren't trying to get to work, get the kids to school, get to whatever. Like everybody's, it's not like, oh, they're just chilling there in Bhutan. People have places to go, things to do. You know, uh, so they're still like needing to get places. But there's an awareness that it's just not worth risking your life to be a dick on the road. And so there, another sign is like, be gentle on my curves. <laughs> Can you imagine being that on the roadway here? <clears throat> they also have really sweet signs about litter. They, there's a, I'll probably do another talk about the environment there, but... Um, don't litter, it will make your life bitter. Be predictable on the road. That's nice. Be predictable on the road. So you're not being unpredictable and, and quick and random and uh, reactive. Be predictable. Be steady. <clears throat> this is one of my favorites. No hurry, no worry. Again. They like rhyming in, in the roads department there. No hurry, no worry. Uh, be courteous to other drivers. I don't know where you're, where you're living, how, how that's playing out, but <clears throat> there's definitely some uncourteous drivers and people that get annoyed or they're riding your tail or they're they honk if you go too slow or they whip around you and um, and some places, you know, as we know, there's full road rage going on. <clears throat> Definitely a lack of courteousness. Driving faster brings disaster. Another rhyming one. Life is short. Don't make it shorter. <clears throat> Mountains are a pleasure only if you drive with leisure. And I think that some of these, like I might post some of these down below, or you could think of your own short, rhymy, catchy thing and put it on your dashboard in your car. Like, What's your intention? What's your motto when you're on the road? I used to, I did this. <clears throat> I made a little pause button, you know, like on a, oh, people don't use tape recorders anymore, <laughs> but a, a stereo and you got a pause button, you know, the two lines, it's usually a yellow button or something. So anyways, I had these yellow stickers and I drew the pause lines on it. And I would actually, because I'm special that way, put my thumb on the sticker and be like, pause. <laughs> and sometimes I would put a print off stop signs so that when I was at a stop sign, I would actually come to a full stop. Like, I mean, a full stop, which is what you're supposed to do. But like, I rarely do like a full stop where like there's no more momentum, but you actually stop the car and then go. <laughs> People will get annoyed if you do that. But, <clears throat> you know, things like this is to have some intention around 
how you are participating in community care and self-care and awareness when you're on the road. And so <clears throat> this whole theme and thing about slowing down, which provides the space for more awareness, more courteousness, kindness, awareness of interconnectedness. That is, we're not just me trying to get somewhere. There's this sense of care of ourselves, our passengers, and all around us, including the very, very many cows just like to hang out on roads. It's a thing. Who knows why? But they're all over the roads. Just It's a good place to chill, apparently, and lots of dogs on the roads, too. <clears throat> so you're dodging around these as well on these narrow, windy roads. <laughs> I don't know why they hang out there. There's nothing to eat. <clears throat> so it's, it, it, it reminds me of like when we were climbing to, there's a place called Tiger's Nest, which is one of the famous or well-renowned monasteries that's really perched, really perched on this mountainside. They say it's held to the mountain mm, with a Dakini's hair. It's like, it's just perched there. And it's 10,240 feet above sea level. So for those of us who have the good uh, the fortune and the privilege, I realize class privilege to be able to go to Bhutan. Um, <clears throat> that we're for people that are visiting the country, we're not acclimatized to that altitude, and you have to go slow. If you don't go slow. You will get very, very sick with altitude sickness. <laughs> and it's the people that think they're real fit. <laughs> like some of the folks I was traveling with that are like, I'm fine. I'm strong. I'm healthy. I'm whatever. And they just go off hiking like they would at home. And uh, they're the ones that get very sick. Um because you have to go slow and like really slow. I can't describe how slow you have to go so slow, small steps and then stop and let your heart settle down again, catch your breath, go a little bit more, stop, rest. <clears throat> of course, the people that live there are just like, Wow. Nothing for them. They'll carry your bags for you because you're like, I can't do it. So that, <laughs> but that experience of having, having to slow down on the roads and on the footpaths opens you up to such an awareness of like, whoa, Look where I am. This is incredible. Like it's gorgeous. Mountain vistas and incredible. Amazing trees and it's very, uh, very uh, treed country. It's in their constitution, actually. <clears throat> um, and yeah, so how slowing down gives you the space and opportunity to pay attention and to open awareness. If you're hurrying in daily life, like get into the car, get to the store, get to work, get home. You're just hurrying. It's very hard to, it. no, it's possible, but it is difficult to hurry and be mindful. <laughs> K 
can be done, but it takes quite a bit of intention to first be very embodied and mindful and present. And then you can move, you know, you can do things at a decent speed, but at the mindfulness comes first to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Im imagine if our roads were just full of these signs constantly everywhere and lots of speed bumps where everyone had to slow down or like get a monster truck and just <laughs> motor through. But <clears throat> where there's signs everywhere of being being curious or being courteous and life is precious and be gentle and go slow and life is short. Don't make it shorter. Like, I just think it's really different. I found it quite touching. And there's also kind of a, a whimsy to some of these signs even though their message is really important. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's it. So um, if you feel like that might be a helpful message for you in your daily life, I encourage you to actually make a sign and put it on your dash. You know, be mindful, open awareness, slow down, take care of others. Might be helpful. And so um, <clears throat> I also have this amazing poem from some of you know who, because I'm always sharing her poems, Rosemary Wittola Tromer. I'll put the link down below in the YouTube video and I'll pop it into the Zoom here. Um, I should do it now because I might forget. And so if you might log off, so I'll put it in right now. There you go. Into the chat. And if you if you want to open that in a separate window or have access to it after the fact. And so this is from Rosemary Wittola Trummer, and it's called Driving with My Son the Night Before His Driver's Test. We turn off the music. <coughs> Practice, oh, sorry. Practice left turns onto the highway. Park on the bias. Park on the street. We get gas. Drive backwards. Use the median, change lanes, use the blinker, slow down, full stop. There's a rule for everything and a comfort in knowing the rules. And you can practice everywhere notes are DMV guidelines, so have at it. Imagine if we all practiced everywhere. If we all signaled before every turn, turn of heart, turn of mind, turn of plans. Imagine if we all agreed, no matter where we were going and no matter where we've been, that we are all travelers on the same side, knowing we're on this road together. Imagine if we all agreed to stop in an orderly way, no drama, no shaming, no blame, so that someone else might take their turn to go. Imagine getting along with others, no matter what they believe. Could be as simple as keeping it steady, looking over your shoulder, making eye contact in a crossing, giving each other some space. The perfect poem from Rosemary, thank you. So let's practice with these intentions and values and integrate them into our meditation and practice. <clears throat> so feel free to adjust your space or your lighting or any supports you need for your 
uh, posture. I'm gonna have some water. One sec. Hmm. So as you're taking your time to settle in, yeah, see if you need any adjustments or movement or stretch or touch. And then feel yourself really entering this vehicle, this embodied vehicle through which we are journeying in this life. Maybe feel yourself really dropping in and <clears throat> taking your seat here. Like your whole awareness and energy body drops into this vehicle, this form, you feel yourself really landing and often it might be helpful to remind yourself to rest back and down. Resting into the spine and down into the pelvis and legs and feet. And bringing in our our values, our ethics that are the ground of this Dharma practice. I undertake the training to refrain from causing harm. And this root value really holds within it all of the other precepts or guidelines or ethical values that we practice. <clears throat> it includes uh, the training to refrain from causing harm with our speech, from causing harm with our sensuality and sexuality, from causing harm with any greed, taking what isn't freely offered, causing harm from into <clears throat> intoxicants which cause heedlessness or lack of mindfulness. So as you rest into this, this vehicle, this embodied present moment, <clears throat> really allowing these values to suffuse your whole being. Let them be the ground beneath you, the guiding principle, the engine of how you move in the world. In these next few moments of silence together, just really allowing a good amount of time to feel embodied, 
landed, present, softening or giving some space around any tension that's here. And then we might invite in this signpost to really invite this in for yourself, speaking to yourself, go slow, friend. And how does that feel in the body right now to just really offer yourself that gift, that permission, go slow, friend. Does the mind jump in with kind of counter arguments? I can't go slow. I have so much to do. <clears throat> and can this just be an inner slow, an inner space, inner calm that can guide us as we move about doing what needs to be done. Go slow and be gentle. Be gentle with ourselves first so that we can be gentle with each other and all beings. What does it feel like in the body to invite in some gentleness, kindness? We might feel these intentions just in a felt experience of one of our practices called metta bhavana, the cultivation of loving kindness, friendliness, benevolence with ourselves. So it might come or resonate for you with words or phrases. <clears throat> May I be kind and gentle with myself. May I go slow. May I be safe. May I be protected. May I be peaceful. Or you might just feel this as an embodied, softening, gentleness, kindness, spaciousness. And let's just rest there together in silence, offering this kindness to yourself with phrases or just a felt experience. 
letting it suffuse your whole vehicle, whole body. And these roadsides remind us, and the Dharma reminds us from this deep inner offering with ourselves, we know that all beings wish to be safe and peaceful, happy, well, protected. And so we offer this as we move into awareness of those around us. So you could feel this kind of like a, a rippling or an extending field of care. This guideline to be kind and courteous and gentle and patient with all those our heart, mind, body comes into contact with. If you like, you could bring into awareness particular person or group of people or you could just let this feel like it's rippling out, like pebbles dropped into a pond. May you be safe and protected. May you be slow and gentle. May you be well. May you be peaceful. Kind of, you could picture yourself kind of traveling through your day and those that you're meeting and passing, even people you don't interact with as you're passing people, you can extend in the silence of your own heart mind these caring metta kindness. And even those beings that we might find difficult or uh, getting in our way, extending, opening our heartful awareness to give some space, to go around with care, to include well wishes, may you be safe and protected. 
May you be well. May you be peaceful. Life is full of speed bumps. We want to meet them with care, slowness, kindness, patience, awareness. And as several of these road signs reminded, is reminiscent of one of our common gatas or uh, chants or um, phrases that are often repeated. As the road signs are saying, life is precious, life is short. So we are reminded that life and death are of supreme importance. Time passes quickly and opportunity is lost. Let us awaken. Awaken. I will not squander my life. And I will not squander other lives. See yeah, how that feels in an embodied present moment way. Slow, friend. Be gentle. Life is precious.
Wishing you safety in your journeys and awareness and gentle slowness, um, whether you're walking or driving <laughs> or sitting still. Yeah. Thanks for practicing with us and um, check out the links down below in the recording and um, be well.